Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Danbury Hattrick's Playoff Hockey on the underreview.org FPHL simulated season. Casey Bryant here bringing you exclusive live coverage of tonight's game. I want to give a quick shout out to my broadcast partners not with me here this evening as Jack O'Mara continues to quarantine in New Milford and Zach McGinnis. Well, he'll, he'll be on the call of another playoff series. He seems to have taken over the reins of the Elmira Enforcers home broadcasts. So uh, pray for the hamster that is on the wheel currently powering the McGinnis household. As for tonight's contest, the Danbury Hattricks take on the Watertown Wolves in the first game of what could be a three-game set. The Hattricks 5-1 against the Watertown Wolves in the regular season, and they did not seem to have any difficulty putting the puck past Jeremy Pominville of the Watertown Wolves. They averaged almost six goals a game in those six games, winning five of them. The Wolves, meanwhile, only scored three goals a game against the Danbury Hattricks, beating against Dylan Kelly or Tom McGuckin. Granted, this will be the first time that the Hattricks will be playing the Wolves since their blockbuster trade to acquire Ryan Marker. The Wolves traded away Tyler Jurich to the Elmira Enforcers, turned right around, and brought in Marker, the superstar from the Delaware Thunder. So the Hattricks have not seen Marker in silver and blue just yet this season. We'll see what kind of impact Marker will have. Meanwhile, the Wolves will have to mark Carter Shinkarik, the man who buried an overtime winner in Watertown earlier this season. That overtime winner gave the Danbury Hattricks their their longest winning streak in Danbury Pro Hockey history at 11 games. So this will be a clash of the Titans up front. And all of this information that I've given you, what relevance does it have tonight? Absolutely none. It, bear, it has no bearing on this contest whatsoever. What you are about to see is a random act of computerized simulation. The, the realm of the living holds absolutely no control over the events that happen here. Everything is completely independent of what has happened before. And that is both the beauty and the tragedy of tonight's events. We're going to turn you over to the simulated Danbury Arena where Game 1 awaits. You're watching Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the underreview.org simulated season. Danbury Arena is packed to the brim and ready for FPHL Commissioner's Cup playoff hockey as the Watertown Wolves pay visit to the Danbury Hattricks for Game 1 here tonight. Jeremy Pominville going up against Tom McGuckin in the cage as Pominville looks to wipe the slate clean. Pominville was bested five times in the regular season by the Danbury Hattricks and well, all of that, as mentioned before, is irrelevant. Watertown Wolves looking to change their fortunes. Danbury playing host to Game 1 here in the Commissioner's Cup playoff. Ordinarily, the FPHL would have the lower seed host Game 1, and then the higher seed would be able to host Game 2 and 3 if necessary, so as to limit travel. But clearly the under-review, uh, not terribly concerned with the stamina and the travel constraints of the virtual characters you see before you as Gordy Bennell's shot goes off the block or a Pominville. Here's Shinkarik at the far side circle, holding onto it, getting it to Bunnell. One-timer by Levesque. They score! Nikola Levesque doing damage against his former squad, and the Hattricks are on the board one minute into the contest. Well, this is a beauty of a one-timer. He takes the feed from Gordy Bunnell from circle to circle. Levesque is waiting for it at that hash mark, receives and is able to rifle it right past the defender who's right in front of him. And Levesque, who won the Commissioner's Cup with the Watertown Wolves in 2018, is the first to strike here in the FPHL playoffs. That's exactly the kind of start the Danbury Hattricks needed. You get the virtual crowd on your side, seemingly get the momentum on your side. You get to tighten things up and play a bit more comfortably. The first one is always the hardest. Pominville covers, and the faceoff will remain in the Watertown zone. Now it's up to the Watertown offense to see what they can do. And as mentioned before, this is the first time that the Wolves will have Ryan Marker on their side when they play the Danbury Hattricks. It's been other characters like Devaney and Jamie Lucas who have caused the most trouble for the Danbury Hattricks. Derek Boudreau has been relatively quiet against Danbury as, a, as opposed to some of the other opponents this season as Vlad Port carries him on the right side. Out to Marker in the slot, now Port out to Powell. Powell crosses to Port, takes a long shot that's blocked in front. Gordy Bennell will carry it up to Aaron Atwell. Levesque flips it back to Bush Anderson, who now slides it over to Shinkarik. Shinkarik enters in on the left side, has a man behind him in Aaron Atwell. 
Now well to Shinkarik, out to the slot. That shot by Shane Morrissey is held by Jeremy Pominville. It's one of the rare times that we've seen Shinkarik and Morrissey on the ice at the same time in this simulation, whereas normally they'd be line mates in the realm of the living. The two of them have a connection that goes all the way back to the SPHL days last year with the Evansville Thunderbolts. Carrying it up the right side is Sunstabo. Sunstabo crosses over to Desjardins. Has it taken away from him by Brown? Brown now against Lucas. Carries it up the ice on the right side. Passes by the Watertown bench. Brown with a wrist shot. That's blocked by the body of Sunstabo. Bogjul slides it over to his right as five minutes have gone by here in the first period. Now here's Michael Desjardins. His shot goes right into the tee on the center of the orange sweater of Tom McGuckin. He keeps the puck alive. As Morrissey crosses red line, blue line, and enters in. To Dearson, to Ruiz, his shot, wrist shot, goes off the elbow of Pominville. Loose in front, picked up by Desjardins, and skated out of danger. Teams trading rush opportunities, as now here's Bullard with a shot that goes off the glove of McGuckin. Very north-south helter-skelter action, as now Corey Anderson up the right side to Casper Dearson. Down low to Ruiz, has the puck stripped from his stick. Once more, back comes Watertown. Here's King with a shot that's a kick save by McGuckin. And steered out. Back the other way, here comes Danbury. Here's a shot that goes off the paddle of the stick of Pominville. Pominville is barreled into by Deerson, and play is kept going. There's no whistle. Pominville is knocked from the crease all the way to the end boards. And Danbury, you know, they might have gotten away with just a little bit of contact there. But that will be a delayed call as that check in the corner will draw the ire of the referee. And this will be a delayed call going against the Hattricks. And they will get a charging call going against Corey Anderson. So an open ice hit in the corner. That's what gets him. As he keeps the feet moving and knocks a man down behind the end line. That's a charge. But driving the goaltender into the boards, that's fine. Interesting logic. Perhaps a makeup call there from the virtual crew. As the puck is immediately cleared down towards Pominville. He takes a skate, whiffs on corralling the puck. I will say, no goaltender in this simulation appears very coordinated trying to field the puck as Marker's shot goes into the catching glove of McGuckin. That is one of the mechanics that is the most broken in these games. The goaltender never looks very coordinated when trying to field the puck. They always skate very awkwardly, kind of like a five-year-old who has to go to the bathroom and they're kind of awkwardly waddling about the ice. Dearson and Marker will go up against each other in the face-off dot, a pair of 16s, and the one in orange wins the puck back, but it's not cleared out of danger just yet. Port looking across the way to Devaney. Devaney has a man down low in Marker. Marker freezes a bit, now gets it out to Boudreau. A one-timer is blockered aside by McGuckin. 40 seconds to go in the power play. Now here's Port at the point. Out to Pell, crosses to Port once more. Now down low and fanning on the one-timer is Boudreau, and that'll be cleared out by the hat tricks. Waning seconds of this power play as Powell picks it up. Up to Devaney on the right side. We're back to five on five. Corey Anderson out of the box. Here's Boudreau as Devaney in front. Boudreau's shot. Believe that was blocked in front. Sustained pressure, though, by the Watertown Wolves. As they loop it around the kick plate, it'll be picked up by Ethan Bush Anderson and given up the right side to, to Deerson. Deerson tries to deke his way towards the slot, leaves the puck behind him. Listmayer tries to dump it in deep. Here's Listmayer at the point. He's knocked off the puck. And now here's Dominic Bogjul. Bogjul has been a thorn in the side of the Danbury Hattricks all season. Sends one into the padding of Tom McGuckin, and he holds. Bogjul, one of the more effective Watertown Wolves in the regular season. One of the more consistent players. It is a strange feeling for the Watertown Wolves, who traded away a franchise player this season in Tyler Jurich, who is a former Danbury and played for the Titans back in the day. He now goes to the Elmira Enforcers where he's second fiddle behind Ahmed Mafouz. Didn't really seem to mind all that much because the Enforcers did a whole lot of winning. With two of the best players in the league and who can blame them? It's like having Crosby and Malkin on your side. 
But Nell sends one into the catching glove of Jeremy Pomville, and it was such an odd trade, too. Five players given up for Tyler Jurich. You almost never see a trade that's that slanted at this level of hockey. Garrett sends one off of the legs of a defender. It's picked up by Phil Bronner. Plus, it's not like you can trade future considerations either. It's not like you can really send draft picks or anything. You can just send cash, but how much cash is, is Tyler Jurich worth? Probably more than any other trade for cash considerations. Johnny Ruiz has the puck stolen away from him. Now Coachman takes a few steps in. Coachman slides into Desjardins. Now to Lucas' shot, he scores! Jamie Lucas continues to sting the Danbury Hattricks, and the Wolves even it up at one with 5.05 to go in the first. Well, this starts by a terrific shift here by Coachman. Coachman recognizes he has open space in front of him in the slot, takes a few steps in, elects not to shoot, finds a better chance across the way for Lucas, and Lucas is able to rifle it home and find Twine for Lucas. That is his first goal of the postseason. And we find ourselves knotted back up in the late goings of the first, and that is the, re the reward for a terrific middle of the first period here for the Wolves, as they've had sustained zone pressure on the hat tricks, as now here's Morrissey taking a few steps in, and then he gets crumpled down to the ice like a crash test dummy. Here's Desjardins on the right side. Back pass for Ballard, his shot is broken up by Bush Anderson. Kendall Bullen Porter up the right side now. Bullen Porter racing ahead with a bit of open space. Pass towards the slot is broken up. Down low for Bullen Porter, out to Bush Anderson at the point. To Atwell, banks it off the wall to Bronner. Now out to Bush Anderson once more. Mealy's one-time shot is kicked out by Pominville. Looks like that was heading just wide. Coachman, up the way, intercepted by Atwell. Bowen Porter over by his bench. Now a long pass finds the stick of Steve Mealy with two minutes to go here in the first. Mealy hampered from behind, still gets a shot off, and that's fought off by Pominville towards the wall. And it'll be dumped in by Watertown, and they'll give chase. Martin Tuma the first to receive. Back pass for Tuma, who sends it up the wall. Bowen Porter slides it over to Bronner. Bronner flicks it towards the net. Shot save, Pominville rebound, they score! Steve Mealy! Neely gives the Hattricks a 2-1 lead. He's in the right place at the right time, and this fourth line stays red hot. Bronner at the circle looking towards the net. It looked like on its way towards the net, it hit off of a Watertown stick. Take another look. Yeah, it went off the stick of Sunstabo. It goes off of the padding of Pominville, and I don't think Neely even really shot it. He just kept his stick on the ice and let the puck ricochet off it. Neely, this fourth line picks up another goal. They were red hot heading into the postseason. Phil Bronner completed the unit, taking the spot of Matthias Kasich. Was out there with Bolin Porter and Neely, and the two are able to connect for a goal. Boudreaux's shot goes into the catching glove of McGuckin, and he holds with 6.5 seconds to go. And a huge goal for the Danbury Hattricks. All they have to do is kill off these final six seconds, and they'll head into the first intermission with a lead. Face off will be to the left of McGuckin, it'll be Shinkarik and Marker. Tied up in the dot and picked up by Cruz Listmayer. The Hattricks will skate it out into the neutral zone. One last shot before the buzzer. Now they'll elect to hold on to it. And that will do it for the first period. The Hattricks waver a bit, but still come out on top after 20 minutes. Two to one is your score at the conclusion of the first period in the, here in the Commissioner's Cup opening round. We'll be back for coverage of the Hattricks and Watertown Wolves as we get set for period number two. You're watching Hattricks Hockey on the underreview.org simulated season. It was exactly the kind of opening frame that you'd want to see in a playoff matchup. Back and forth scoring, lots of momentum being carried to each side, shots on goal about even, 12 shots for the Watertown Wolves, 11 for the Danbury Hattricks, a high octane offensive first period. Hattricks now will be skating from left to right on your YouTube screens. 
They're wearing their orange alternates here for the playoff series. Looking to make a bold statement right now. Uh, interesting that they would uh, go with the alternate. You don't see too many teams wear their alternate jerseys in the postseason. They normally leave it for the more traditional home and away kits. Try to keep things simple. Faceoff be to the right of Pominville now as we get our first offensive zone faceoff for the Hattricks in the second period. Bunnell out to Atwell, slides it to Bush Anderson, back to Atwell. Hattricks defense, crisscrossing as Bush Anderson in deep. Out to the midboards, Levesque out to Bunnell, looks to the net, rings it off the post. Bunnell was brought down to the ice as he shot, had Pominville beat. Now back the other way, Gordy Bennell trying to cut the puck off. Ryan Marker still is able to get a shot off. It goes off the side of the net. Ruiz will pick it up and look up ice. Has Bronner with him. Ruiz stops short, feeds Morrissey, takes a step in. That's a glove save by Pominville. Now Sunstable the other way. Sunstable crosses to Marker. A long shift here for the top player on the Watertown Wolves. Looping it around behind. Picking it up along the kick plate are the hat tricks. Here's Phil Brauner. Gets it up to Ruiz. Morrissey at the blue line finds him. Morrissey back to the net. Looking across the way, it's intercepted and carried out of danger by the Watertown Wolves. Here's Desjardins to Bogjul. Blocker save McGuckin. Listmayer in the corner. Knocked off the puck by Bogjul. Terrific play by number 47 there in silver and black. Here's Coachman with a long drive. He scores! Start the countdown, it's a rocket from the blue line. Coachman buries it. And the Wolves are able to even up the score as Coachman, perfect placement for that slap shot. And he picks up his second point of the game. And it looked like there was one man screening McGuckin in front. It looked like that was Bogjul. And the Wolves have knotted things up at two. Now Corey Anderson on the left side entering back in as the Hattricks trying to reclaim their lead as Kenny Garrett's one-timer is blocked in front. Picked up by Lamaru. Up the right side looking for King. It's intercepted. Taken away by Anderson. Back pass to Tuma. Delayed penalty coming up on the Wolves as Tuma took a stick to the midsection as he was carrying the puck up ice. And this will be the first power play of the game for the Danbury Hattricks as we take another look at Tuma. Yep, took a stick up high. And it'll be Tyler Bullard, who looks a bit like Travis from Tiger King in that particular likeness since in simulated form, but oh well. No offense to you, of course. Atwell over to Bush Anderson, back out to Atwell. Long drive is blocked in front. Boudreaux knocked down to the ice. Here's Shinkarik with a point blank chance that's gloved out of the air by Pominville. Carrick with a good physical play in front of the net to take the puck away and get a shot off. Shinkarik leaves it for Levesque. Out to Atwell, over to Bunnell. Now Shinkarik at the circle, banks it off the end boards. They get it out to Levesque. Keeping the puck moving on the hat tricks, looking for the proper shooting lane. Here's Levesque, takes a few steps in, has an open lane to the net, no one in front of him. Elects to pass and stay still, and the Wolves are able to capitalize and clear it down the length of the ice. Now up to Shinkarik once more. Shinkarik slides into Bunnell. Bunnell feeds Bush Anderson, looking to wire it down low. Intercepted and cleared by Watertown. 20 seconds to go in this power play. Here's Levesque crossing red line, blue line, now over to Shinkarik. Shinkarik looks to the net, that's fought off by Pominville. Two seconds and one, that will do it for the penalty, for the power play. Out of the box comes Bullard. Bullard to Marker, down low for Bullard, and a chance out of the box is broken up by Shinkarik. Now up to Ruiz, has Morrissey streaking to the net. Ruiz to the slot, out to Atwell, over to Brown. Brown winds and fires, blocked in front, rebound, they score! Shane Morrissey 
buries the rebound and looked like the first shot never got through to Pominville, but Morrissey is there. And if you want to bring a sign that says beware of dog for Shane Morrissey, well, he sniffed out that rebound like my Labrador sniffs out peanut butter. And he's able to put the hat tricks back on top. A terrific chance there for Shane Morrissey in front and he comes up big for the orange and black. I have to admit that the sign game has definitely been on point for the Hattricks faithful here in this one. We've seen two signs so far in the crowd, one in support of Steve Meal, he has a goal, and one in support of Shane Morrissey, he has a goal. And you would think that if the crowd had that kind of voodoo magic that they would bring just more signs for everybody on the team. Beware of Morrissey though, I'm not even really sure if there's a breed of, it doesn't sound like beware of dog, nor does it even sound like a breed of dog. What breed of dog begins with M? Maltese, Mastiff, uh, Malamar, that's not a breed of dog, um, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> but nevertheless, I mean, what are the odds that two fans come with signs and they both happen to have uh, goals in the contest? So there's McGuckin getting bowled into by Bullard. Long shot is stuffed at the blue line by Gavrick. Gavrick up the left wing, has Anderson to the net, as well as Dearson. Dearson out to Tuma. Seven minutes to go in the second period. Here's a chance at the far side post. That's broken up by Pominville. Another try, another save, Pominville. He caught that with the knob of his stick. Here's Gavrick out to the slot. They score! Corey Anderson! And Scorey is able to find the back of the net. It's 4-2, to two. Danbury. And another sign is... Odds are if you brought a sign to the Danbury Arena tonight, that player that is featured on the sign is going to score. Apparently, if you're Corey Anderson, that's in more ways than one, as he has a potential fiancé in the audience. And stop me if you've heard this before. Vlad Gavrick along the wall feeds it to the slot. Corey Anderson is able to score. Unfortunate little uh, voice crack there for our PA address announcer, uh, Christian Gardecki, eh? <laughs> Sounded like a Howard Dean. Go! I'm sorry. I don't mean to pick on you, Christian. Puberty is hard and everyone goes through it, but you'll, you'll get through it eventually. <laughs> Kasich in the dot against Little. Little wins the battle and carries it up on the right side. Dumps it in deep. McGuckin. Awkwardly skating back towards the end boards and is unable to stop the puck. Neely up to Kasich. Kasich has a couple of wolves surrounding him. Looking down low for Bolin Porter, Coachman breaks it up. Over to the left side, here's Little. Is brought down to the ice by Steve Brown. Absolutely ruthless hit there by number 44. Now here's Devaney. Looking across the way to Port, to Powell. Port has a diving block in front of him by Kendall Bowen Porter. Terrific job by Bowen Porter with no regard for his virtual body. Here's a shot that's kicked out by McGuckin. Devaney takes the puck away from Listmayer. Terrific shift here from Devaney. Port to Powell. To Bruce, now out to Powell once more. That pass is broken up and carried out by Bronner. Brown to Morrissey. Morrissey crosses the blue line with two minutes to go in the period. His shot goes off of the elbow of Pominville. Pops straight up into the air and over the cage. That is how the Delaware Thunder were able to score on the last game of the regular season. It went off of the blocker of McGuck and popped up into the air and found its way into the back of the net. That was a goal by Jordan Clark and that helped the Delaware Thunder get into the playoffs and doomed the Hattricks from sealing the top spot in the Eastern Division. As Devaney is positively leveled by Phil Bronner. Bronner laying the hammer on him. Here's Levesque. Behind the end boards in the final seconds of the period. Pass is intercepted by Bogjul out into the neutral zone it goes and that will do it for the second period. The Hattricks take a 4-2 lead into the final frame. Watertown Wolves have some work to do if they're able to come back in this one. For the Hattricks, they were able to get things going offensively, had a couple of good looks, found a post, and a couple of goals to boot. 
Now it's time to lock things down in the final frame. You're watching Hat Tricks Hockey on the Under Reviews simulated playoff. Don't go anywhere. Shots in the second period were 9-6 in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. More importantly, the Hattricks are able to find the back of the net twice, as opposed to just once for the Watertown Wolves. Now the Hattricks will skate right to left on your YouTube screen, trying to, trying to secure their first playoff victory in franchise history. Down low to Boudreau, his shot and a quick breakaway off the faceoff is stymied by McGuckin. And the Hattricks will have to tighten that up here in the third period. You simply cannot allow the Watertown Wolves to have too much open space. They have too many skilled forwards to be allowed room to maneuver. Hattricks will have to lock things down and play a bit more conservative here in the third period. Marker has Devaney and Boudreau with him. Marker wins the draw, gets it back to Powell. Out to Vladport, that shot from a bad angle is shoulder to side by McGuckin. Now Shin Carrick up the right side. Shinkarik is broken, is pushed off the puck and now carrying it ahead is Marker. Marker, toe drag, shot, he scores! Ooh, and McGuckin will want that one back as Ryan Marker uncorks a wrist shot that beats McGuckin blocker side. Take another look at it as Marker has a defender in front of him. Glides over more towards the slot where he's able to get a bit of a better angle and he has McGuckin beat to the far side and well, you'll want that one back if you're number 30. For Marker, it's his first goal of the playoffs and that gets the Watertown Wolves right back into this contest. Now it's up to the defense really to keep putting McGuckin in positions to succeed as here's Bush Anderson at the far side circle. Bush Anderson to Bunnell in the slot, back to Atwell, winds, fires, gloved by Pominville, and he holds. And you have to shake that one off if you're McGuckin as well. That is to say, if emotions played any factor in this, they do not. We have yet to ask what the emotional or mental state of any of these virtual players are. It does not seem that they are phased by much. They continue about their business like Ivan Drago and Rocky IV. No emotions. If he dies, he dies. That, of course, is ironic because there is a literal robot in Rocky IV, which I feel like doesn't get talked about enough in the Rocky universe, as Brown sends one wide. Rocky gets an actual intelligent life form in his house. He buys a intelligent robot for his friend Paul. How was this not talked about as the dumbest moment in Rocky? Everyone talks about Rocky V being the worst one, and it is. But the robot is the worst character. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. It's absolutely hysterical. Now a pass down low is fought off by McGuckin and taken away by the Hattricks and carried up. Here's Ruiz looking towards the slot, Bronner of the trailer. Ruiz once more picks up the puck in the corner. He's got a couple of Wolves on him. Bronner with a great hit, knocking down Bogjul. He sends Bogjul right into his bench. Desjardins to the slot. Now back to Desjardins. Desjardins is brought down from behind by Steve Brown. The Brown and Bronner have really been throwing their weight around. They're wielding Mjolnir like Captain America in four. There's a one-time shot in the slot, and they score! Travis from Tiger King gets the Wolves even with the hat tricks like Joe Exotic tried to get even with Carol Baskin and we're tied at four. A terrific chance here for Bullard in between the hash marks as he takes the feed from Desjardins and wires a one-timer past McGuckin. And understandable that he'd want to take a shot at McGuckin. McGuckin is orange with black stripes on his jersey. Just trying to make as many connections as I can. It's topical. The Wolves have yet to hold a lead in this contest. They have trailed on three different occasions as answering right back are the Hattricks. They score. 
Gavrick buries one past Pominville, and the Hattricks regain the lead for the fourth time tonight. And Gavrick is able to take this feed from the circle a one-timer, and he beats Pominville. And boy, there is a particularly thirsty crowd on hand to take this one in as Gavrick had a sign acknowledging how dreamy he is. And I'm not denying that. Gavrick is a good-looking man. I'm just saying that in particular for a playoff game, there are certainly a lot of singles looking to mingle in this particular contest. And this team had a home game on Valentine's Day. I'm not even sure that there was that much attention being given to the players on that day. Nevertheless, play goes on as the Hattricks now hold on to a one-goal lead once more as here's Gordy Bennell looking to the net, broken up. And the Wolves again will have to play catch-up. To Ryan Marker, his shot blockered out by McGuckin, and that's exactly what you want if you're Tom McGuckin, and that you want your offense to keep providing for you. The Hattricks averaged 5.67 goals for in six games against the Watertown Wolves this season. Here's a chance for Bunnell out in front, sends it wide. They had no difficulty scoring against Watertown. That was never the issue. Ethan Bush Anderson picks up the puck and meanders his way up the left side. Carries it into the attacking zone. Looks for options. Out to the high slot. Kasich with a long shot is seen and held by Pominville. A terrific slapper off the stick of Kasich as like a fadeaway jumper. He was at the blue line and skating back towards the red line and was able to get a shot off. Looking like James Harden. Right down to the left handedness too. Kasich will be in the dot against Little. Both fourth lines out for the respective squads. Kasich wins it back to Kenny Garrett. Bowen Porter over to Mealy, down low for Kasich, backhander, he scores! Mattias Kasich with the backhander, and that provides some crucial breathing room for the Hattricks. <laughs> and some Connecticut fans in the house as Mattias Kasich in close on Pominville, has Pominville down a bit too early, takes the feed from Mealy. Is able to be, he only had one spot to score. And he was able to convert. I'm more impressed, honestly, by the fact the backhander was nice, but I'm more impressed that you were able to find enough people to hold signs that spell out Connecticut and spell it correctly. You'd be surprised, honestly, how many people I've encountered from Connecticut who are unable to spell Connecticut correctly. It's that silent T, or excuse me, that silent C in the middle of the world. Connecticut. Seems to trip people up. So good on them for having so many people in the section to begin with. And for just generally being uh, bright enough to have it be in the correct order. The next step, of course, would be to paint your chest like David Putty in Seinfeld. If you were able to find enough people for that, that would be impressive. That then, then you're starting to get into impressive territory. Face off one right back to Kenny Garrett. Dishes it over to the right circle and it'll be covered up by Pominville. And we'll do it once more from the Watertown defensive zone. Hattrick's applying some pressure here, perhaps searching for what could be the backbreaker, trying to get their biggest lead of the night. Face off is tied up. Over to Powell. Taken away. Now Gavrick at the circle. Gavrick crossing the way to Dearson. His shot. He scores. Casper Dearson. And the Hattricks have their biggest lead of the night at 7 to 4. Well, Gavrick is going to pick up his second primary assist of the game and once more exploiting the system. Wiring a backhander over to Dearson, who's planting himself right in front of the crease. And the friendly ghost is able to sheathe the dagger into the Watertown Wolves. A three-goal lead late in the third period. On home ice, and the Wolves will have some drastic work to do if they're able to come back and even up the score in this one. We'll keep an eye on Pominville as time ticks away. You never know how aggressive the Wolves will want to be. 
Out to the slot it comes. Corey Anderson to Kenny Garrett. Less than six minutes to go here in the third period, and I don't know if this were Patrick Waugh coaching the Watertown Wolves, he would probably have Pommelville skating towards the bench right about now. Over to Gavrick on the left side. He's met by the defense. Gavrick retains the puck, skates right into the wall of Wolves in the slot as, a, as opposed to just carrying it in and getting a shot off. Now here's the other way, Buller. To the slot glove save by McGuckin, and he holds. A terrific shot by Sanstebo. Bullard will be out there with Dallas Desjardins and King. Sanstebo. Down low to King. He's met by the Hattrick's defense. Listmayer pokes it into the corner. 3.40 to go in regulation time. Time the enemy of the Watertown Wolves. They will have to average a goal a minute. They're going to come back in this one. Now Bullard looking towards the slots and Stabo has it broken up by Phil Bronner. The Wolves will elect to keep Pominville in the net and all but punt the remainder of the game as there's Brown sending it off the end boards. The Wolves will try to lick their wounds and take it back to their house in Watertown tomorrow night. Here's Brown crossing to Listmayer, teeing up one more slap shot that's snatched out of the air by Pominville with 94 seconds separating the Danbury Hattricks from their first playoff win in franchise history. Well, there hasn't been playoff hockey in Danbury since 2017 when the Danbury Titans last played here in the Danbury Arena. The two teams that played in the FHL before the Hattricks were wildly successful. The Whalers made three consecutive Commissioner's Cup Finals, won one of them, that being in 2013. Danbury Titans, meanwhile, were the best team in the league in 2016, but were bounced in the final. Made it back to the postseason the next year, were unable to bring home the cup. And then there was quiet in the Hat City. As Atwell sends one off the padding of Palman Villa. Rebound is another stop. The Hattrick cementing their legacy here by earning a postseason victory. The Hat City is used to postseason success. So honestly, especially after the season the Hattricks had, if they do not make it out of the first round, it would be a disappointment. Or at least as disappointing as a simulated first round exit can be. Rushin Carrick on the right side. He sends it into the glove of Jeremy Pominville, and he holds with 21.1 seconds to go. I suppose that is the ultimate defense mechanism if you are one of the better teams in this league. You can all say, oh, it was just a simulation. You can use Andy Bernard's logic from the office. Andy Bernard does not lose contests. He wins contests, or he quits them because they are unfair. Time ticking down. Bush Anderson to Bunnell. To Levesque, shovels one just wide. Ten seconds to go here at Danbury Arena. Crowd on its feet. Shinkarik sends one off of the legs of a defender. Two seconds and one. That will do it. Game one belongs to the Danbury Hattricks. A 7-4 victory. The Watertown Wolves fight valiantly. But the Hattricks now one win away from the Eastern Division Final. McGuckin locks things down in the third period does enough to get his team the victory and some timely goals from the hat tricks are able to seal the deal they'll be back in action tomorrow night up in watertown new york be sure to tune into the underreview.org's youtube channel for the remainder of the fphl simulated playoffs and tune in tomorrow night for game two that'll do it here from danbury arena i'm casey bryant have a good night and stay healthy